Brighton's finest. This is Juice. Thank you so much, Natasha, for joining me at Juice on what is possibly the busiest time of the year, which is uh, always a great thing for Record Store Day because it brings in folks from all over Brighton and further afield for uh, what is a record store buying pandemonium. Yeah, absolutely. So this year, again, you're going to be planning some amazing things. You've got six different events happening including five in-store performances. Yeah. Can you talk me through them? Like with the first one, Hayley, who who was known as Hayley Bonner. Yeah, yeah, and has had name change this year for the new release. And um, she's putting her new single out, Brat, for Record Store Day, 7-inch. And um, yeah, and it's great It's great to have back. She's done in-store for us before on the back of the last album, which we were massive fans of. So to have her in opening for Record Store Day, she's taking that breakfast slot, which we love. Um, mm. We've had... Hannah Peel do it for us before and last year we had Holly McVie do it and it's just it's really lovely having at eight o'clock in the morning having someone just come and kind of reward the crowd as well that have been out there pretty much all night a lot of them yeah and um it's just a really nice way to kick start the day we open at eight um having someone um willing to do an in-store for us that time as well but someone that we're really into and has also got a release is really exciting i think lots of people are actually just really excited to see her on the day absolutely um, yeah which is brilliant she is going to be the perfect present to all those uh well hundreds of folk yeah. who uh, queue out throughout the night yeah what was the number last year Luckily, people have kind of wised up a little bit to the fact they maybe don't need to queue overnight and kind of get the first train in in the morning instead. But I think we were on about 2.50 when we arrived at 6.30 in the morning, um, which is pretty hardcore. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, and, and there are like some releases this year that are bound to get people in that same kind of frenzy. So um, we never quite know how it's going to work. But um, but yeah, by the time we actually start serving at 8 o'clock, that is hundreds of people. Mm. So Yeah. And they're also rewarded with, uh, is it coffee from uh, the shops down the road? Uh, so we've got um, Black Mocker joining us this year to um, to look after the queue. Um, they're a brilliant coffee shop and because the, the queue's directing towards Sydney Street this year and that's where they're based down that end. Yeah, they've got involved with us. They're massive music fans as well, so it's really <laughs> nice for them. They're kind of, they get their decks out and stuff during the day for oh, Rapid Store Day, so they're getting involved. Um, yeah, so we'll have Black Mocker looking after people. Yeah, it feels yeah. like it's not just for the record stores, is it, Record Store Day? It kind of brings in, certainly, Kensington Gardens, which is a, a lovely, uh, famous street in Brighton, Yeah, uh, partly down to having resident records on there. Wow, um, and, and many before us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but a lot of the community comes together and gets involved in the fandom. Yeah, I hope, I mean, hope just the way we see it is that everyone will benefit from it. So we've got lots of businesses getting involved this year, but also White Rabbit are massively on board with it and are doing a big stick it on session and stuff and trying to cool. I think that's the important thing is it becomes more than just about the record shop itself mm. it's part of the whole community and we're also lucky in Brighton we have a community of record shops so the fact that people will come to Brighton they can go to four different shops on the day and that's a really unusual situation that you've got you know four shops in walking distance of each other that that are all taking part in the day and are all offering completely different things for the day so people can get a proper record store day experience but across lots of shops yeah which is fantastic My love, this is the end of days Never, ever, ever, I will never, ever see you again Time brings a sense of change Never, ever, ever, I will never, ever be the same. 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 I. Never, 
the other events you've got going on, 2pm, you've got uh, Robert Louis. Yeah, he's coming down very kindly, offered to DJ for us. Um, I mean, True Thoughts have been brilliant supporters of Record Store Day from the outside and put releases out, I think, every year. Mm. He's coming down, yeah, just to DJ and keep our energies up in the afternoon. It's a really nice <laughs> thing to have going on. I'm really glad he was up for doing it. And also Re, who is on the True Thoughts label. Absolutely, yeah. And this um, this record came out at the end of last year. It's a fantastic record. Mm. It's had a lot of a lot of shot playing. It's really beautiful, and it's amazing that um, that it hasn't come out on vinyl till now. But it's great. They've done it for now. They've put it out on a coloured translucent purple vinyl, and and have done it for Record Store Day. So yeah, so it's a proper little True Thoughts afternoon as well. So we've got her coming down to do an install in the afternoon. And then two awesome names: Daniel Wakeford and yep. the Physics House Band. Yeah. Um, both playing in store. Yep. Um, I know Daniel is an incredible performer. Yes. Like uh, he likes to really um, put his all into it. Yeah, and engage um, his audience. And, absolutely. Yeah. And then Physics House Band, one of the, <laughs> the most crazy and most incredibly amazing Brighton bands. Yeah, and loudest. And loudest. Yeah. yeah. I know we're well aware of that. We're a little bit scared. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> it will definitely wake us up at the end of the day. That's yeah. what we decided to go for. Everything else is quite stripped back acoustic throughout the day, and then yeah, we just decided to end the day with a party, which mm. is exactly what we need. And um, the you know the the Mercury Fountain record was on the stereo a lot last year, and um, it just feels really nice to celebrate with a local mm. band who've had a record out that we love. And they're putting a special version out of it for the day. Mm. So, yeah, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, I honestly couldn't think of a better band to finish it, actually. Ah, I love although, it. Although I can't, <laughs> so you'll I be can, coming down. Oh, yes, oh, okay. yes. Um, but I can imagine all these vinyls flying out of their sleeves and uh, <laughs> going everywhere. <laughs> it's it's going to be pretty frantic. Yeah. yeah. We've never had anything like this at the end of the day. Um, so it's a bit of an experiment for all of us. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it does feel like what the day needs. The day needs a really big, loud bang. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You will be stocking more than 500 releases, yeah. which will be started to be sold on the Saturday, and it, you can buy them on the Sunday as well, am I right? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, we sell them until they sell out. I mean, yeah. a lot of them will sell out on the Saturday. Of course, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, Record Store Day has really become a weekend for most people, to be honest. Mm. And and I think a lot of the, the people that were kind of early Record Store goers, or Record Store Day goers, have kind of grown to actually really like shopping on the Sunday. Mm. And um, they've kind of transferred their... We have a queue again on the Sunday, because a lot of people just like the you know what I like the day I like the event but actually it's really nice just to come in on a Sunday mm -hmm. pick up some bits that are, that are still hanging around and do it in a much more mellow style so we find that um, the Sunday is also really busy with a different set of customers yeah and there's just so many amazing releases coming out on that day um, yeah. uh, is, what what ones are exciting you personally me personally well <laughs> Uh, from my history of growing up and things I was into, I'm I was a massive Carter fan, so <laughs> I'm um, I'm particularly excited to have Carter's uh, Carter's Hundred and One Damnations released <laughs> around <laughs> still day, but, uh, I and uh, which will yeah make <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> um, but fortunately, so are a lot of our customers also very excited yeah. about this release. Um, they've done it on white vinyl with black spots, and it looks really cool. And I'm very excited to have that in. But there's on the flip side of that, I'm really excited about the Jeff Buckley Live at Sydney release, which is coming out. It's never been on vinyl before and they've done it as a deluxe four lp package it's really swanky and oh, really wow. fancy so um yeah that would be really good i mean there's different things across the shop that everyone's into different things and um, the door to release is something else i'm really excited about that's mm. only been available digitally before it was a soundtrack to a video game that they did yeah and i'm really excited to have that in and again it's one that a lot of our customers are really really into the same david sylvian's um dead bees on a cake is coming out on white vinyl and it's um it's been really nice hearing and reading him talking about the release himself and how excited he is to see it because it's been done the way that he originally hoped it would be put out so it's got 
um, four extra audio tracks on it that weren't on the original release and put together in the way that he hoped it would be. And I think those are the really nice stories behind the Record Store Day releases are the ones where mm. the bands have got really involved, the artists are doing doing it their way. And yes, yeah, so that's a pretty special one for the day as well. Yeah, that does sound like a really special one. Yeah. Um, there there yeah. are also some kind of ridiculous releases as okay. well. Um, <laughs> okay. Any that's kind of jumped out at you? What are we are we talking shaggy here? <laughs> like, I think, think that's what I'm getting, feeling yeah. you're getting at. Um, it's really difficult, you know. Every year I, I look at the list and there's sums where I think, seriously? You think like last year, the Toto release that yeah. got laughed at when it got... It ended up becoming one of the most in-demand releases on the day that people were genuinely really excited about and had a massive nostalgic attachment to. It's really difficult to determine what, you know, what is important. You laughed at me saying Carter. For me, you know, that could be someone else's novelty release for me that's actually yeah. you know it's a valid exciting release it's it is really difficult when you look at these things but yeah there's always things that are on the list where people think really seriously is it actually necessary mm. um well the reason we end up stocking virtually every release is go over, over the years we've learned that these things mean different things to different people and like you know things which which we deem not necessarily valid or important or exciting actually a lot of other people have got very excited about or there's a reason why why it's exciting to someone else that we didn't realize so we do end up stocking most of it just because the demand there is for most of it yeah and every, everyone that's the thing that's so great with vinyl is it's, yeah. it's this physical thing that uh, creates a memory once you buy it Absolutely. once you hear it for the first time yeah so there's a lot of sentimental value when it comes to these special releases yeah Absolutely. So there's like new sentimental value growing out of this and then people living nostalgic sentimental value as well. So, mm. yeah.
Brighton's, Brighton's finest. finest. Bringing the artists closer to you. Juice. Brighton's finest. This is Juice. What are you planning in your store for Record Store Day this year, and why did you choose it? We're planning lots of things actually because it is our first Record Store Day uh, in Brighton. I've done several in other parts of the country for other people I've worked for. But this being um, my own shop, or mine and my partner's own shop, we decided to really go for it to uh, sort of stamp ourselves on, on the day. And we've got uh, live bands. We've got uh, DJs coming into the shop. We've got uh, free bagels for the first 30 people. Most of the shops on the lane uh, are doing lots of deals like discounts and things like that. We've got uh, five bands uh, through the day. The first one will be a competition winner, so we don't actually know who that is yet, so that's a local band. Uh, We've also got Mudlow, who are sort of sleazy, dark, uh, desperate bluesy sort of stuff, and a band called The Filthy Tongues, who used to be good by Mr. McKenzie for anybody who remembers their indie from the uh, early 90s. Uh, And we've also got White Room, who we've had play down in our basement. We do live shows from time to time, so they're coming back to do um, a short set in the afternoon. And we end with Desperate Journalists, who are a really good band uh, from London that I've been wanting to sort of put on for some time, because I used to be a, a gig promoter in a previous life uh, and so yeah we were getting them to play as well you never got there For a shop like yours, a new one, how important is Record Store Day? What does Record Store Day represent? It's hugely uh, important to us, as I think it would be any independent store that's um, taking part. It's very difficult trying to be an indie store um, on the high street uh, in this day and age. It doesn't matter what town you're in, but of course Brighton is um, a particularly expensive town to be uh, trading in. So for us, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's very, very important. I know there's 500 records, so it's tough to pull one out of the air. 500 Record Store Day uh, releases. releases. Yeah. But which one really jumps out at you? Which are you most excited about? It's difficult because um, from a commercial point of view, I think uh, the Bowie uh, Welcome to the Blackout, the live album from uh, his sort of uh, Berlin period, would be really interesting for customers, especially our customers. But for myself, it would be between The Cure's uh, Torn Down album, which is remixes uh, by uh, artists like Mogwai, 
and the David Sylvian album because I'm one of those sad 80s people who still very much loves David Sylvian and the Dead Bees on the Cake album has never been out on vinyl so to me that's hugely important They've stolen the moon The magic is gone And there in its place A black midnight sun The darkness is frightening Love is denied We've stolen the moon God only knows why The stars have lost their daughter The devil's thieves have won And they're in a place A black midnight sun Did your love of vinyl culture was was there a single record that you remember getting you into vinyl? Um, I don't know if it was a single record, but it was the single that did it um, back in 1979 when I was um, just about to start secondary school. Um, it was an affordable way to get into a different world, basically, and I was very lucky because 1979 and 1980 were particularly good points for the seven inch single with lots of new wave but the sort of the fallout from punk led to some very interesting stuff through new wave and post punk and so that's where i started and I've, I've never stopped so what's the most treasured record in your whole collection most treasured record in my collection would probably be let me think i really there are several cure albums that i couldn't live without there's, um, you always go blank when you have these questions thrown at you, you know, and, and suddenly all you can remember is the Flock of Seagulls album that's uh, lurking in the collection somewhere. But um, yeah, I mean, Cure or Sylvian, or there's a fantastic album by a Scottish band called The Trash Can Sinatras that I and I alone seem to love, um, uh, called I've Seen Everything, which actually was, it was kind of, it came out um, the week that I moved to Brighton. Um, I got a job at HMV back in 1993, I think it was. And it came out and it sort of summed up my, my first few years in Brighton.
Finest. Bringing the artists closer to you. Juice. Brighton's Finest. This is Juice. Ewan, thank you very much for joining me, man. Thanks for up having me. Um, Ewan from Rare Coin Records uh, on Trafalgar Street, right? Yes, yes, and, down the bottom uh, Trafalgar Street. A bit of uh, a Brighton staple. You've got three stores in your building. You've got Rare Coin Records on the bottom, middle floor on the middle floor, and then RK Base Records is yeah, it, at yeah, the top. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's uh, you guys bring an incredible amount of music there's lots of different genres there um, and it's a place where if you're looking for the slightly more um, alternative and interesting records you could say uh, you're going to find them there yeah I'd hope so I'd hope we definitely cater for anyone that's um, looking for something a bit off the beaten path uh, certainly in terms of like second hand stuff we go out of our way to try and have the weird and unusual and obviously we have like genres that we specialise in uh, each of the floors do certainly but we do also try and have a little bit of everything mm. and record store day 21st of April that's uh, always a chaotic time for any record store but um, for you guys it must be uh, yeah it must be because there's, there's only two of you working in the shop at, at the moment is there? Um, there's two on the ground floor at any one time and then there's normally one or two others covering the other two floors mm. but yeah mostly two of us at a time and it is like chaotic is the right word for record store day we're pretty a pretty small operation ultimately and you do have to cram probably several weeks work into maybe 10 days a week to get it all ready so it's pretty busy it's pretty hectic definitely but very much worthwhile because it is a, a massive thing for a record store like um what would you say is the the biggest pro from record store day coming into town yeah it's definitely worthwhile and i guess i guess maybe the biggest pro would be just the exposure you get really i suppose just the general heightened awareness of records and record shops and perhaps the opportunity to get people across the threshold who may not have come and checked you out before is an overall a great event and you know it's nice that a lot of people choose to come and support and celebrate an independent record shop that's a pretty beautiful thing from my point of view it ain't hard to tell i excel then prevail the mic is contacted i attract clientele my mic check is life or death breathing the sniper's breath i exhale the yellow smoke will move through righteous steps deep like the shining sparkle like a diamond sneaker he's only on the island and my army jacket lining hit the earth like a comet invasion nazis like the afro centric asian half man half amazing because in my physical i can't express through song delete stress like more trend then extend strong i drink my wet with medusa give us ash guns and hell from the tip that i lift and in hell it ain't hard to tell Salute up, parties are shoot up, knives are analyzed, drop a jewel, inhale from the school 
me try again. Wisdom be leaking out my grapefruit trunk. I dominate break loops, giving mics minstrel cycles. Streets disciple, I rock beats that's mega trifle. And groove even smoother than moves by Villanova. You're still a soldier. I'm like Sly Stone and Cobra, packing like a rasta in those seal bot. Vocals are squeezed. I look some CZs drop, though they need not to sneak. My poetry's deep. I never fell. Nas's rap should be locked in a cell. It ain't hard to tell. What have you got planned? What time are you opening? We're open at nine, which is real early for us. We don't normally open till eleven. We don't have any events planned this year. We've done some in stores in the store before, perhaps partly due to the chaos. We're not doing anything this year. <laughs> it is a big undertaking, and actually, the last time we did an in store, I remember sitting sitting at the back of the shop and watching it uh, about sort of seven o'clock in the evening, just completely exhausted you know like literally on my last legs yeah there's a mighty amount of records to choose from and I was looking through the ones you're going to be stocking or the picture that you put up on your Facebook oh right yeah yeah we did we've done our recommended board just with some of the stuff that we're sort of most excited about there are nearly 500 releases this year yeah um, we're not stocking all of them but we are we're going to you know having a good stab at a few hundred and there's some incredible names in there like uh, well the one right at the top and I'm one that I'm sure you're excited about it's the NAS with the National Symphony Orchestra doing yes. Illmatic yes um, and I've heard a couple of uh, videos or seen a couple of videos from it and it is spectacular yeah yeah I am I am actually legitimately excited about that uh, Illmatic would be one of my all-time favorite records nice to hear a, a new take on it and yeah I've, I've seen some of the, the, the stuff online at, at it but it looks to be a great a great concert and it, hopefully they've captured that nicely on on wax mm. what what other ones are you uh, particularly excited um, about or are there any that you because there's always a couple of ridiculous releases yep. aren't there yep there's definitely several ridiculous ones some that I can't understand why they've been reissued uh, any you wanna oh, should I, should I really be out? there are I mean so there is a song I'm actually I actually like the song it's uh, Chuck Adema some pliers tease me which is a big mm. like pop reggae hit from back in the day yeah um, and it's a song like I like that song but it's a real common record to find on vinyl that's been reissued which as someone that sells second hand records as well puzzles me because you can pick that record up real cheap you know for literally less than a quarter of the price is going to be on record store day but yeah. you know there will be those collectors out there I guess there will be someone that wants it or, or I mean a lot of people are suspicious of second hand music or don't buy anything second hand so I guess that's maybe where a purchase of that record comes in but you know I'm definitely not knocking the song itself <laughs> Oh, 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 
Um, in terms of things that I'm, other things I'm pleased to see coming out, there's um, there's a Rag and Bone Man 12, which is features two exclusive tracks, which I believe he recorded like uh, direct to vinyl. So oh, wow. So that that's when they they set the band up in one room, mm. press record, and at the same time like a, a lacquer is being cut of the tune as they play it. Wow. That's, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's gonna have a certain feel to it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and I know he did that for record store day as an exclusive thing like I don't think there's any plans for that to come out anywhere else mm. which is exactly that's exactly the sort of thing that is is cool for record store day and you know makes it an exciting event um, there's a new Prince Fatty single which Prince Fatty used to have a, a studio just around the corner from our shop so I know him pretty well we would go and see him in, in his studio quite a bit and he would come down a lot and uh, I heard that song a long time ago so it's a version of Everybody Loves the Sunshine featuring Omar and Fat Lip mm. which it's real cool. Yeah, looking forward to stocking that one. Uh, True Thoughts have got a, a nice record. I think the artist is called Rhea. Yep. Uh, Jam City remix of one of her tracks. So, you know, it's bright and pretty involved. Uh, Mr. Bongos are releasing a bunch of good stuff again. They're redoing the Sign Monday albums, which are um, mm. Stone Cold classic material as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. And they've got another um, Marajata record coming out. Yeah, the the Pat Thomas um, yeah, like Marajata. Another, another one of them. They did one of for Record Store Day last year. So that's pretty cool. I mean, there's loads. There's some. There's some cool. You know, like new music. There's a lot of good funk soul reissues. There's a lot of good records across all the genres. Right. There's um the other one that quite pleased to see is the Tom Waits had um like a triple vinyl. It's like three LPs in a box set, and that only ever came out once on vinyl and goes for a he heck of a lot of money. Mm. And so they're reissuing all three separately for the first time, which again is kind of cool. It's, that record would set you back a lot of money if you tried to buy an original and it's now split up. So if you don't want them all, you can get them and they're pretty great as well. Yeah, and it's, it's important to say that you don't, certainly for record store day, you don't just stock the kind of jazz, the hip hop, the funk, the soul. It's kind of more of a range of uh, everything. Oh yeah, we do go right across the board on record store day. We do a little bit all the year round, you know, like undoubtedly hip hop, funk, soul, reggae, world music, they are our sort of uh, specialities. Mm. But we sell, a, you know, we sell some new rock and indie stuff as well. And on record store day, being in central Brighton, you'd be kind of crazy to not try and cater for all audiences and, and crowds. You know, we had we've had people ringing up for Shaking Stevens records. Mm. You know, we'll have all the sort of Bowie stuff. Yeah, it would be crazy to not try and get as many records into the hands of the people that want them as possible, really. That king was whittled from the bone of Cain With a little drop of poison in a red, red blood She need a way to turn around the bend She said, I want to walk away and start a war again There are things I've done I can't erase I want to look in the mirror, see another face I said never, but I'm doing it again I want to walk away and start over again No more rain, no more roses On my way, shake my thirst in a cool, cool park That's a winner and never replace there's a heart that's beating in every page The beginning of it starts at the end When it's time to walk away and start all over again Weather's murder at 103 William Ray shot Cora Belly A yellow dog knows when he has seen You want to walk away and start all over again No more rain First in a cool, cool pond Cooper told Molly the whole block's gone They're down for jewelry, money and clothes I always get out of the trouble I'm in I wanna walk away and start over again I left my Bible by the side of the road Caught my initials in an old dead tree I'm going away, but I'm gonna be back when It's time to walk away and start over again
Brighton's finest. Bringing the artists closer to you. Brighton's finest. This is Juice. Thank you very much for joining me, Simon. Simon Raymond from Bella Union, from Lost Horizons, from Cocteau Twins. Bit of a legend when it comes to music. Thank you very much. Let it all go to your head or anything? I don't. (laughs) Um, But the reason we got you in is because Bella Union Vinyl Store is, uh, is joining in on Record Store Day this year, on the 21st of April. And that's quite exciting for us, and I can imagine it's very exciting for you. Yeah, I mean, we're entering it in um, a bit of an unusual way, I suppose, in that we're not competing with any of the other stores in the sense of uh, stocking the a wonderful array of titles that are out there. We're literally just stocking our own. That's the difference, you know. I, I mean, I'm such a big fan of Resident. Me and Abby uh, go there a lot. We're friends with them. We're not in competition with them. So it would be rather strange to run a record shop that sells your own products 364 days of the year, but just on this one day, all of a sudden, you decided you were going to stock loads of other stuff just to make a few quid. <laughs> so we, we wouldn't do that, but we are stocking all the Bell Union record store day titles, yeah. Mm. And there's, uh, there's four. There's that, four, uh, yes. And uh, four, well, pretty uh, tasty releases to the looks of it uh, yeah they're all exciting because Laura Veer's track is brand new her album is coming out soon as well so she's getting a lot of airplay at the minute so that's something that's current uh, the Tiny Ruins release is a reissue of her first album although it's never been out on vinyl here before so that's great Our Broken Garden which is a quite an interesting one because the band are Danish never really had a breakthrough here it was kind of they they sort of preceded the scandinavian you know influx um no one really picked up on them quite as well as they should and they're an amazing band their first album's called when you're blackening shows and was only out on cd and it's 10 years ago this year so we decided that was ripe for a a record store day release there it was a fallen Bird in the time, its time had come. And then the sage gave his wise reply, and I looked down. And on the twelfth night. song and a smile and on the twelfth night the fool came with his song and his smile and we rose merrily forward Thank you. 
and the classic Dirty Three album, Whatever You Love You Are, um, which was, interestingly enough, recorded at, and mixed at my studio back in the day in 1998 oh, wow. in the Cocteau studio, which was quite unusual because obviously the band are Australian and they'd previously made records in the States with Steve Albini and, you know, in, 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 in Melbourne. But uh, this was the first time recording here. And that's a very precious record. Can you talk me through the day of or what, how it was? Is Back it, in the day? Well, we had this amazing studio. Um, it was Pete Townsend's studio from The Who, and um, he rented it to the Cocteaus, rented it to our band for, I think we were there 11 years. And we had probably been there about, um, we think we moved in in the early 90s, so just around Heaven and Las Vegas, the Cocteaus album, which came out in 1990. So Dirty Three, yeah, we met them at Phoenix Festival and we got on brilliantly with them and decided they were looking for a label. They decided they wanted to hang out with us. So we put their records out. Ocean Songs was the first, which was the Steve Albini release. And then, yeah, they just said, you know, we're looking for a studio. Do you, want, do you know anyone, anyone with a studio in London? We were like, yeah, <laughs> we've got this place. And it's pretty amazing, because it was. It yeah. was just stunning. Nice. It was Pete on the... Townsend's yeah, I mean, studio. it was like a luxury playground, really. It was like right on the River Thames in Richmond. It had this massive big balcony overlooking the river. Oh, we had an awful lot of parties in those days. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they recorded that album there. And we had a great engineer at the time. And they always talk about that record now Warren Warren Jim and Mick about that's their best sounding album mm. and I'm sure it was in part down to the studio the time they had to do it they weren't in any rush because we let them have the studio for free yeah um, and also our engineer who was really top-notch he, he worked on a lot of the Cocteau's live stuff mm. so yeah that's a special one to be reissuing because it's not been pressed since that time yeah, I can imagine that one's going to shoot out pretty quick, I'd imagine. Well, one would hope so. I mean, you never really know. And Record Store Day is fascinating in that sometimes you, you know, see all these wonderful people queuing up at four o'clock in the morning outside record shops to get their thing. And then sometimes you go in a week later and there's still loads of copies yeah. of certain things. You know, you don't really know what's going to go. And I suppose that's the challenge of running a store. Well, always, but, but specifically for Record Store Day is how many to order because obviously there's only a limited amount probably and maybe there's only an, a certain amount you get offered to take because let's face it rough trade resident piccadilly maybe the sort of three biggest stores yeah. will probably take the lion's share of those um so you have to be careful what you choose i mean and, and no different for us because we we run on a very tiny budget and our margins are very very small so you know we'll we'll be taking care of what we order as well
You moved from London, was it, to Brighton with you as a half Abbey? I can imagine part of the discussion was, well, Brighton's got a great music scene, and the sea, of course. Why do you think there is such a strong love for vinyl in Brighton? I think we're very well served with oh, the shops. Mm. Um, there seems to be a real passion for it uh, from the store side. And I think if you've got a place like Resident over in the lanes, and even if you're not you know, a regular buyer of vinyl, you're going to be aware of that shop because, you know, not only is it fabulous, it's expanded mm. over the last few years. It's doubled its its floor space. Um, they now do in-stores, uh, albeit in quite a sort of lo-fi way. They've got no stage or anything yet, but, um, you know, bands love going down there and there's a real interaction with the community. Their mail order is superb. Yeah. You know, if you, if I mean, I'm, I may, I use their mail order system all the time. I go in and collect it, but I, if I'm too busy at work to get down there to have a stroll about the shop, I do order online and then just go in there and pick it up and then spend half an hour buying extra stuff that I shouldn't be. That's the problem. Go, yeah. Going in the store is, is bad for me. It's bad for my <laughs> for my wallet. Uh, yeah, I think Brighton's just has, well, it has an amazing music scene right now. I think it's never been better. I, I don't agree. know. I've only been here six years, but. I think the new bands in Brighton right now are as good as they've ever ever been. In fact, well, better than it's ever been because, you know, Brighton, let's face it, should have had more top-notch bands over the years than it has. It sounds like you've got a, a huge love and admiration for vinyl. Um, where did this all start? Like, was there a particular record which uh, you can remember getting your hands on or seeing? Well, probably a couple of different things. I mean, I was growing up as a kid in a very musical household. My, my dad was a, quite a famous musician and songwriter in the 60s and obviously all there was was vinyl in the house you know it was just tons of it my sisters used to be into all the pop music of the day um i remember uh, obviously lots of beach boys seven inches beatles seven inches around the house i used to actually remember getting a gilbert o'sullivan i mean most people listening to this radio station will not know who gilbert o'sullivan is but i, I remember being totally crazy about gilbert o'sullivan for a couple of weeks because he was on top of the pops and he was like wearing this sort of like cloth cap and braces and he was just so different to all the other kind of stuff on, on TV yeah. on top of the box so I, I was really into him for a little while but my first proper record was Never Mind the Bullocks oh, that was yeah. the first time I sort of was 15 years old when when Sex Pistols came to town and I you know I remember going down to, to the record shop in Wimbledon where we were living and um, spending my money on, on, on punk singles pretty much for the next couple of years um, so that, that was the first record w that taught me how to play bass as well, I learned how to play bass playing along to Never Mind the Bollocks.
Juice, Brighton's finest. Bringing the artists closer to you.